I call myself a POA. I'm a prisoner of Alzheimer's. I'm an extension of his disease. I feel compelled to speak out for both victims because they have no voice and for caregivers who are worn out. This is how Mara Comer begins each day, crouching in the dim morning light to empty her husband's urine bag. Just a minute, love, I'm coming. That accomplished, she removes his catheter and helps him out of bed. Okay, I'm gonna swing your legs around. Her. In a moment, she'll get one of the occasional fleeting acknowledgments that he knows she's there. He's probably not aware she's his wife. More likely, she's a familiar presence. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. You okay? Harvey Gralnick, Comer's 70-year-old husband, is in his 12th year of Alzheimer's disease. He's entering the final phases, when most normal human interaction ceases and patients completely withdraw. Let me check your eyes, love. Honey, we're having some problems with your eyes. As devoted as she is to caring for him, Comer told us she's now in her 12th year of something like hell. Comer's story echoes that of millions of families across the country coping with the ravages of this mostly untreatable and so far incurable disease. It's an equal opportunity destroyer. It doesn't care what color you are. It doesn't care how much education you have. It doesn't care how much money you have. It can destroy you. Uh, they may have exhausted their financial resources in addition to their emotional resources. There's actually a, always a, a second patient uh, with, with Alzheimer's disease because the caregiver requires attention by the physician as well. The second patient in this case, Comer, was a long way from that when her husband first fell ill. Hello, I'm Meryl Comer on special assignment in Tokyo. Then a TV newswoman, she spent her days interviewing business leaders, Washington political figures, and even presidents. Divorced from her first husband and with a young son, Comer had married Gralnick in 1980. He was then at the peak of a prestigious career as a physician and scientist specializing in blood-related cancers at the National Institutes of Health. But in the mid-1990s, Gralnick was diagnosed with early-onset Alzheimer's and eventually had to leave NIH. I've seen enough cases to know that it has little or nothing to do with the use of the mind. I think there's too many successful, ambitious type A's who've gotten it to justify that uh, theory. Comer eventually quit her job and became Gralnick's full-time caregiver. As often happens with Alzheimer's patients, he'd also become paranoid, delusional, and occasionally even violent. All personal care was a confrontation. Push them. When the mind's demanding they don't understand personal care, so they take it as if you're attacking them. Okay. I had my front How teeth knocked out in the hospital. Alzheimer's is not the gradual dementia that everybody thinks it is. It's, it goes in another direction. It's frightening. It's physically frightening, and it's uh, terrifying. The sad thing is you don't really have a good memory of your mom when you lose in this way. And uh, what the caregiver does mainly is keep the secret. The behaviors are inappropriate. Inhibitions are the first to go. One of the chapters of the book that I have yet to write is, is that your husband peeing on the barbecue? Subtitle, social improprieties and why invitations stop coming. You get embarrassed. You protect them, you pull them away, nobody sees them. Nobody sees the horror at night. We lent her a camera to record scenes when we were not there. She captured one typical nighttime calamity, when her six foot two inch husband, weighing 200 pounds, falls to the floor and can't get up. Harvey, please help me, love. Aside from those dramatic episodes, even routine caregiving tasks are taxing, especially on the staggered four hours of sleep Comer says she gets most nights. Determined to help his life stay as ordered as possible, Comer gives her husband a daily shower as he sits on the toilet. Get some cologne. Good to go. We asked Comer what her greatest hope was now. I hope that I don't wear out. <laughs> Caregivers have a very <laughs> bad rate. <laughs> they tend to die before the patients, statistically, because of the intensity. So my wish for Harvey is that I just don't wear out or give up or there's an episode where I can't manage it somehow. Until then, she says, they'll manage as best as they can.